Guards at Chernobyl's checkpoints often talked about weird shapes moving in the radiation fog and strange calls echoing through the empty city. Have you heard those odd sounds at night? One guard softly asked another. Like nothing I've ever heard before. Curious about these tales, Professor Davies went deep into the exclusion zone, setting up cameras to find the truth. Three months later, when the first images showed up on his computer screen, the seasoned scientist couldn't even breathe. The cold wind blew through the empty streets of Pripyat, carrying radioactive snow across a landscape frozen in time. The year was 2023, and Professor Michael Davies stood at the edge of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, his breath making puffs in the cold air. His research gear was spread around him, including many motion-triggered cameras that would soon become silent watchers of this deserted place. This is it, he whispered to himself, looking at the empty landscape. Everyone thinks I'm just hunting ghosts, but I know something is definitely here. The scary silence was only broken now and then by the sound of his boots crunching in the dirty snow. The exclusion zone spread out before him, a huge area covering 1,000 square miles. Trees had grown over the streets, pushing up through concrete and asphalt. Empty buildings stood as hollow reminders of the awful nuclear accident that happened here back in 1986. The radiation meters on Davies's belt clicked non-stop, always reminding him of the invisible danger still present. Each step forward felt like walking deeper into a world after everything ended, where time had completely stopped. For many years, odd stories had spread among the few people still living near the exclusion zone. Local hunters spoke quietly about unusual shadows moving through the radioactive mist, creatures that seemed bigger and more numerous than anything they remembered seeing before the disaster. I saw tracks last winter, an old hunter told Davies during his research. Not wolf tracks, not bear tracks, something else entirely, something that shouldn't even be there. Some people claimed to hear howls unlike normal wolves, while others reported seeing animal footprints that didn't match any known species in the area. These stories were usually dismissed as fear caused by radiation, but they caught Davies' attention and strengthened his drive to uncover the truth. The mystery of these sightings haunted his thoughts, pushing him to seek answers where others only saw danger. His colleagues at the university had called this project a total waste of time and valuable resources. Nothing can possibly live in that radioactive wasteland, they insisted. Even his research partners questioned the sense of putting wildlife cameras in a place long thought to be completely dead. You're wasting university money on a hunt for ghosts, his department head had argued. That place is dead, Michael. Just accept it and move on to something more useful. But Davies couldn't shake the feeling that there was much more to this story. Something about the way the wind moved through the abandoned building suggested that this supposedly lifeless zone held important secrets waiting to be found. Over several hard weeks, Davies and his small team ventured deeper into the zone. They carefully installed 42 cameras throughout the Ukrainian section, each one strategically placed to monitor different areas of the forbidden landscape. The work was careful and often dangerous, requiring them to move through the radioactive hotspots while carrying heavy equipment. Every evening, they returned to their base camp with their radiation meters showing increasingly worrying readings. The abandoned city of Pripyat cast long shadows as they worked. The famous Ferris wheel, which was never used, stood like a rusting guardian. Schools remained empty, with children's belongings still scattered exactly where they were left decades ago. Time seemed completely frozen here, but the clicking of their radiation meters never stopped for a moment. Look at this, Davies said to his assistant, pointing to a half-finished math problem still visible on a classroom blackboard. It's like they just walked away in the middle of their lesson, 
fully expecting to come back the very next day. As winter tightened its cold grip, the cameras began their silent watch. Day after day, they captured frame after frame of the seemingly lifeless forest. Snow fell softly. Branches swayed in the wind. And the sun rose and set over a place where humans could no longer safely live. Davies returned to his laboratory, preparing himself for long months of looking through footage that might show nothing more than an empty wilderness. His commitment to the project never weakened despite the growing doubt from his fellow scientists. The first few weeks of footage revealed very little, just endless frames of snow-covered landscapes and abandoned buildings. But then something clearly changed. Davies noticed definite movement in one of the frames. He leaned closer to his computer monitor, his heart starting to beat faster. Could it be just the wind moving things? Maybe a technical problem with the camera? The grainy nighttime footage contained mysteries that needed much closer examination. Wait, what was that? he exclaimed to the empty lab, rewinding the footage again to look more carefully. There's definitely something moving right there. Sorry for the interruption. Before we continue with the story, I kindly ask you to like the video and subscribe to this channel. It is very important for us. Thank you very much. But as he kept reviewing all the footage, patterns began to clearly show up. Shadows moved through the forest at night. Tracks suddenly appeared in the snow where none should exist. The cameras were catching something truly amazing, but Davies needed more solid proof before he could be completely sure. Each new frame brought more questions than answers, driving him to look even deeper into this radioactive mystery. The deeper he looked into the footage, the more his hands shook with excitement. What he was seeing went against everything scientists thought they knew about how radiation affects wildlife. In an area where nothing should be able to live, life was making an unexpected and amazing comeback. The meaning of his findings were starting to shake the very basics of what experts believed about nature's ability to recover. The cameras clearly showed that the exclusion zone had become something completely unexpected. Where humans had run away in fear, nature had taken back its land with remarkable strength but the true size of this amazing change was still hidden in many hours of unwatched footage. Each new day brought fresh surprises that challenged normal scientific beliefs about radiation's effects on the natural world. Davies worked non-stop, carefully studying frame after frame. Each new discovery added to a picture that seemed almost impossible to believe. The total absence of human activity had created something never seen before. A huge, unplanned experiment in how nature responds when people suddenly disappear. His small office had become a window into a world where nature was writing its own new rules of survival. This can't possibly be right, he said to his colleague who had stopped by to check on him. According to everything we know about radiation, these animals shouldn't be here at all, let alone actually doing well. But just look at this amazing footage. As winter slowly changed to spring, the footage revealed even more secrets. Wild boars came out from the depths of the forest, moving in large groups through streets where cars once drove regularly. These weren't just lone survivors barely hanging on, they were thriving communities. The animals showed no obvious signs of radiation damage or sickness, moving with strength and clear purpose through their radioactive home. Their healthy presence suggested a story of adaptation that no scientist had expected, but it was what appeared next in the footage that made Davies question absolutely everything he thought he knew about the zone. Wolves, more numerous than in any other European forest, moved freely through areas once filled with humans. The camera footage showed them hunting together, playing, and raising their young in the shadow of abandoned Soviet-era apartment buildings. The wolf packs seemed to have built a complex social system that perfectly matched the natural order that existed long before human settlement. 
My God, Davies whispered as he watched a large pack of wolves move confidently through an abandoned apartment complex. It's like they've created their own civilization in our complete absence. The amazing findings kept coming one after another. Roe deer jumped gracefully through overgrown fields, their numbers actually higher than before the nuclear disaster. Foxes darted cleverly between decaying structures, seemingly completely unaffected by the invisible danger that had forced all humans to leave. Each new piece of footage added to a picture that challenged everything scientists thought they understood about radiation's impact on wildlife. The animal's behavior strongly suggested they had developed a natural understanding of their unusual environment. Then came the discovery that would completely shock the scientific community to its core. In the deepest parts of the exclusion zone, the cameras captured something that hadn't been seen in this region for over a hundred years. The majestic European lynx, a species long thought to be extinct in the entire area. These elegant hunters moved like silent ghosts through the radioactive forest, living proof that life could not only survive here, but actually flourish wonderfully. Their unexpected presence represented a return to an ecological balance that had been completely lost many generations ago. This changes absolutely everything, Davies exclaimed excitedly during a phone call with a colleague. Do you truly understand what this means for science? The lynx has returned, an animal that completely disappeared from this region long before the nuclear disaster ever happened but the lynx was just the beginning of the amazing discoveries. Brown bears, another species believed to have vanished completely from the region, appeared clearly on multiple camera recordings. They walked slowly through the abandoned streets, taking back territories their ancestors had lost to human development long before the nuclear disaster ever occurred. Their successful return strongly suggested that nature's ability for renewal was far greater than anyone had ever imagined possible. The extensive footage painted an extraordinary and unexpected picture. The Chernobyl exclusion zone had somehow become an accidental Eden. The very disaster that had made this land completely uninhabitable for humans had created a perfect paradise for wildlife. The complete absence of human activity had allowed nature to reclaim everything that was once lost, proving far more beneficial to these animal species than the negative effects of radiation. The zone had become a living laboratory, clearly showing nature's incredible ability to adapt and thrive even in the most challenging conditions imaginable. Davy's amazing discovery forced the scientific community to face an uncomfortable truth. The wildlife of Chernobyl was showing that human presence could actually be more harmful to nature than one of history's worst nuclear disasters. These animals, in their quiet strength, were telling a powerful story about nature's remarkable ability to adapt and heal itself. The important lessons of this discovery would challenge conservation strategies for many decades to come. We've been looking at this whole situation completely wrong, Davies explained carefully to the gathered research team. What we always thought was just a dead zone is actually a perfect refuge for wildlife. Our absence has somehow become their salvation. The cameras continued to record day after day, documenting a world where nature had triumphantly overcome catastrophe. In this place of human tragedy and abandonment, Life had found a way to not just barely survive, but truly thrive. The Forbidden Zone had become living proof of the remarkable resilience of the natural world. Each passing day revealed new chapters in this unprecedented story of ecological recovery and renewal. Did you like this story? Which do you think matters more for wildlife to flourish? Having no radiation or having no people around? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the story, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Nature has an amazing power to recover and adjust, even in areas we think nothing can live. 
Thank you so much for listening. See you next time in another video. Enjoy your day.